we need CO2 free energy carriers in vast quantities. Uh, it feels like the future is already here now. And uh, that is also true for Mercedes Benz. We have, we have sped up our ambition uh, to put the company in a position to already by the end of the decade uh, go 100% electric. We know that it's not just the product side that needs to be there. We'll take care of that, that infrastructure and other factors uh, will play a very, very big role in the, the speed of adoption. But we believe it can be done. And if you go and visit us here, you will see that we have brought four world premieres, all electric, uh, to this show. So it's happening. It's happening. Carsten. You know, I think also for our industry, which probably has been hit somewhat harder by this COVID issue and is still in it, nevertheless, this crisis has accelerated the transformation of our industry. So I think in our case, it's obvious that with no single technical solution in sight, transformation will be a puzzle of many things. But that puzzle is accelerating because all stakeholders are also expecting us to transform faster. It's not only our customers, it's not only our shareholders, not only the public, also our staff. Whenever I talk to young people and tend to see is to the younger the more, they want our industry to transform faster to be more sustainable. But at the same time, we shouldn't see this as a defensive move. I think it's obvious mobility is as fashionable as ever. With reduced mobility, as we all have seen it in the last 18 months, I think the value of mobility has risen once more. And also, if you look around the world, what's happening in our case as we are connecting not only people and economies, but also cultures, I think mobility has never been more essential to keep this world as peaceful and as globalized as it is. So I think it's an exciting time. I'm not denying that the pressure, again, is coming from all sides, but I think this pickup of speed of this transformation is exciting everybody who's part of it. Stefan. Well, I think carbon-free is a big job, right? That's something for generations. That's a really big thing we are working on right now. And it's absolutely clear that we now have started it because we don't have targets, we just do it. And that we see that right now, we do on many dimensions. One is our companies. We all are working on getting our companies CO2-free, carbon-free companies. That's very important. And that, for example, Bosch did it with 400 locations to get carbon-free. That's one thing. Second is the products. And there, we have to always recognize the products and services are not only about carbon-free, because with carbon-free, with electrification of powertrains and with cars, being then driven by CO2-free electricity. That's one thing. But the second thing, and this is most important for the show, the technologies have to be safe and exciting. And the exciting part is very, very important. And I always focus on that, because that's the new technologies you see inside the cars. You see inside the interior with the screens, the interaction technology, the way how we handle cars, the connectivity. That's so important, because only exciting battery electric vehicles will be purchased in the end. So this industry is a consumer industry in the end. We have to recognize that. We are on the way. We are definitely on the way. You can see it with all the products which are shown here. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Great. Now that you already gave us an insight into the transformation, where would you say are comparable structures? So anything that you might look into the supply chain, look into details. Like, let's do a deep dive into where the three of you might connect, might inter um, in between, really do something that is transforming the whole industry. Would you say it's comparable, for example, for the long haul and for the short distance in your industry, Carsten? Well, I think to put things into dimension, aviation is part of the challenge. 2.8% of global CO2 emissions are coming from aviation. But I think we are a much larger part of the solution. So I think it's not only about the reduction in general, it's also about which role can we play in the future. But in aviation, it's obvious that, for example, electrifying does not work. The laws of physics are against it, especially when you look at long-range airplanes. There's not a technology in sight to have long-range travel in fairly large aircraft being done by electric propulsion. So the intermediate 
technical solution in our industry will be sustainable aviation fuels. And they are available today, but in a very limited amount and at a very high cost. And that, I think, will be the next big thing for our industry. How can we change that? Individually, you can travel CO2 neutral today, even long range, if you are willing to pay the extra for the sustainable aviation fuel for us to put on board. For example, about 500 euros to the US. But hardly anybody is doing that. So I think it's also part of the honesty, which I'm sometimes missing when it comes to the whole sustainability debate. There is cost allocated to it. And as I said before, availability is a key issue for us. Um, give you a number. Lufthansa is the largest buyer of sustainable aviation fuels in Europe currently. And all the fuel we are buying is just 11,000 tons, which sounds a lot but it just serves us for 100 long-range flights, which we do on one afternoon normally into to the US and back at night. So there is indeed a multiple uh, solution approach with sustainable aviation fuel in our industry being the biggest intermediate technical solution. And one day we will see new propulsion systems. We will see new ideas initially for smaller airplanes, eventually for larger airplanes. But we should be honest that in this regard, there is, as I said, different than the automotive industry, not one technical solution inside. On the other hand, I think we're much advanced in other things. I just bought a new car, high-tech car, built in Germany. And it has an autopilot system, so it does a few things automatic. But whenever things get difficult, my car stops. My airplanes can't do that. So I think when it comes to autonomous driving, using digitalization to enhance safety and security, there maybe aviation is a little bit ahead of the automotive industry, and we can learn from each other in that regard. So very exciting times, but the answer is innovation in technology. And that, I think, is what people like us, I think, need to bring across as a message to everybody also in political exciting times like right now in Germany. Ola, would you agree on what Carsten just said? Of course, Carsten. <laughs> we're going to try to prevent the car from stopping unannounced as well. Uh, although uh, for an airplane, it would have other consequences than maybe for a car. If we look at what's going on for us now, uh, as far as automotive is concerned, electrification is the main path towards zero emission. Uh, on the R&D side and the new technologies, and just look at the products that you can see here at the show, it feels like we have made 10 years progress in the last 24 months. So the uh, technological uh, development curve here is very steep. Next to that, we have an industrialization task ahead of us. Uh, only for our company, we presented at the end of July an accelerated strategy uh, to take us to full electrification. What does that mean for Mercedes? More than 200 gigawatt hours of battery capacity. Some of that is installed already today, so we have started. But if you look at the whole industrial task towards the end of the decade, it is enormous. So here we're changing the footprint, the industrial footprint of a whole industry. Of course, it can be done, but it's no small task. And as I said, next to the product side, uh, we have to try to go in lockstep on the infrastructure side and push for charging infrastructure everywhere as fast as we can so that uh, there is no reason uh, for a customer, uh, because of convenience, not to buy an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Stefan, would you? Well, I would like to one. mention a different aspect. We all share one thing, that we are considering our people. Our people as our employees, but also our customers. This is a giant transformation. We're not talking just about a technical story. Well, I'm always excited about great functionality in vehicles, right? I'm always excited about carbon-free powertrains, yes. But in the end, we are running an industry. That's why we're here in a dialogue format. That's why we do this IA different, because this is a task for society. We have to win people that they join us going this path. And we have obviously also to win our employees because we are transforming their jobs. That's not an easy thing. That's something which is for sure also painful. That means we have to rebuild factories, close some and open other ones. And that's a transformation on the side of people. And that is sharing between all of us. We only can do this if we all join. And definitely it will not be a painless effort. 
This will cost something also to us, but I think it's worth it because in the end we're doing this for this generation, but also for the next one. So we have to go. So Stefan, you're really pushing it into a very optimistic and very bright outlook. Why would you say the challenges that we may have faced or that every industry has faced are past and the future looks bright? What, what is the optimistic part? No, and the optimistic part, I believe, is we have all understood that we have to change something. Mm -hmm. And you see this here. I mean, many people said that this industry hasn't understood. Many people said that the people in the countries have not understood that there is change needed. But guess what? We want to give a signal which is clear that we understand. We want to change. We are starting the change. That doesn't mean that you can see us here now telling you that it has been done. That's not our job. We can't do that right now. It has not been done yet, but we will do it. And that's a promise I think we should give to each other. That doesn't only mean the management has to agree on each other that they do it. That means all participants in this, in this entire industry and society have to agree on this. So I'm quite optimistic in that because so far, I mean, we have not to, de to decide that we don't want to stop climate change, right? I mean, that's not a decision we should take. And I think we have done that. We have taken the decision that we do a change. Carsten, would you say you're also that optimistic in that direction for the carbon-free mobility? Well, I am quite optimistic standing on a stage here in Germany that there is a huge energy coming from this place for the challenges we described. First of all, there's a very high awareness level in Europe, not maybe in Germany quite as much as in Sweden or in Scandinavia, but in, for a global industry like yours and ours, we are definitely ahead when it comes to awareness. Then the answers to a high degree will come from technology and innovation. And also that is something where this part of the world is strong at. So I think these two things are playing in our favor. The one thing we have to be more careful about is regulatory elements. There, historically, Europe has not been smart in making sure that our industries are not being punished for doing more for the environment and those industries or companies outside of Europe who are doing less for the environment are getting awarded. I think there we need to have a little bit more of a dialogue between the regulatory side, be it in Brussels or in the capitals of Europe and our European companies like us, that we make sure we really create ideas which are benefiting the environment and not benefiting those companies outside of Europe who do less. But let's also be self-confident. I mean, both industries, the most advanced cars in the world, are engineered in this part of the world. The most advanced airplanes are engineered in Germany and France. So I think we have a great place to start from. But let's make sure that, again, not only as individual corporations, but also with the regulatory side, with the politicians, with an open dialogue, honest dialogue in the media, that we maintain that head start and don't fall behind. And again, honesty, I think, sometimes is missing when it comes to this, I think. So from your perspective, an honest dialogue is next. What would you say, Ola, is in the next step? Uh, the next step is uh, implementation and execution. Uh, as Karsten said, sense of urgency is there. But more than that, mm -hmm. uh, most big industrial companies have already made a strategic shift. Uh, and in my view, the only strategy that you can have is a strategy that ultimately takes you to a net zero position. So strategically, we have made up our minds. Capital allocation is going into the new technologies. Uh, the engineering resources are going into the new technologies. So the decision making, in, in my view, that is almost behind us. Now it's about execution and picking up speed, but also about synchronization. Uh, because many things need to happen when you have a paradigm shift of this magnitude. Uh, as I mentioned, you have the product, we'll, we'll take care of that. But you have the infrastructure, that's something where governments and industry need to work together. Uh, and all of this only works if we have an energy transition going on in the background as well. So the electricity that we need to propel our cars, or maybe green hydro hydrogen that you need to, pu to uh, produce synthetic fuels, that needs to come from a CO2-free source. And if you have all of these three things synchronized, more or less, then we can really make it happen. Then we can fulfill the Paris Climate Agreement. And then we will have a robust business model also on the other side of transformation. So there are a lot of reasons to be optimistic. 
but uh, uh, the attitude is now let's roll up our sleeves and kind of do the work. Just when you say then, what kind of like time frame are we looking at? Uh, we have uh, for Mercedes set ourselves very clear targets with regard to CO2 neutrality. We picked as part of our so-called ambition 2039, 10 years ahead of the Paris Climate Agreement. Why? Because you have a car park that is in in the market, and gradually you have to replace that car park. So our ambition is to be 10 years ahead of Paris. And 10 years ahead of that, we will put the company in a position where we can go 100% electric in all markets where that's feasible. So it's two really clear milestones, 2030 and 2039. Very clear numbers. Stefan, what's the next step? Well, I think um, very important, and that has been mentioned by Ola and Carsten already, we need to get lots of energy which is CO2-free in any form. So if it's hydrogen or if it's electricity, if it's liquid fuels, right? We need CO2-free energy carriers in vast quantities. Then we can transform the continent really CO2-free with our lives still in a modern way, in a free way, still having a decision for choice. So that's a big task which is in front of them. We need definitely help there. That's not something we can solve easily ourselves with these industries which are standing here on the stage. And also, I want to underline, for me, very important is we should not stop having great new ideas. So we should fertilize innovation, mm -hmm. ideas, new things, because we will need it. Anything that can bring us technologically, idea-wise, further on to carbon-free living is welcomed and has to come. It's not over yet. The development has not stopped now, and now we just get it into place. No with the technology we have now available today, we probably don't reach it so easily with 2050. That's what our, we said we want to do, or in Germany, maybe even 2045. We need more. We need better ideas. We need it cheaper. We need it more accessible. We need it more available to all people. So I would say, let's go on both front lines, more CO2-free energy carriers and more ideas. Then I think we're in good hands. More, 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 custom. More, more. Also more. <laughs> Yeah, well, our goal in our industry is to be carbon neutral net by 2050 and to be at 50 percent by 2030. But in our case, due to the laws of physics, it will be a net carbon zero industry. So we'll have the pillar of technology, the pillar of infrastructure, which Ola is correctly referring to. And in our industry, we'll have the pillar of compensation and storage. Only those three combined will allow us to be net zero by 2050. This will require huge investments. So let me also tell you, I know that um, on behalf of the whole industry, both Stefan and Ola, you're paying a little bit more for air freight right now, but it's for a good cause. We invested for a clean planet. So gentlemen, on the last few seconds closing note, what will move us next? Short. What will move us next are zero emission <laughs> intelligent vehicles that are fun to drive, clean, and smarter than ever before. Clear. Go ahead. What's, uh, uh, what will move us next? Well, I think moving at all is as exciting as it always has been. I think that's part of the industry we are jointly in, be it mobility on the ground, mobility in the air, at different speeds. In the end, mobility is one of the issues which is driving modern economies. So let's do that in a cleaner way, but let's not give up the self-confidence that we are doing something great for the world and the times we live in. I think that's also part of the story for me. Absolutely. Stefan? I also think same dimensions. Sustainability will drive us. We will all join sustainability as a target. Safety will always be an issue. We don't want to be harmed. People want to live a safe life and excitement. We will have to join an exciting new spirit on carbon-free living. That's definitely what joins us now, and that's the next steps.